So hi everyone, this is uh, Glenn from Astrobloke and today I'm going to be stripping down my AZGTI portable mount. Um, brilliant little little portable mount this. Um, basically it's like a Star Adventurer but uh, it's fully go to and uh, guides on declination and RA. So uh, it's, uh, it's really good. Um, Recently, my guiding figures have not been brilliant. Um, I'm still, it's still been okay, but they've been going going up. And I've found that um, when I've been trying to balance the rig, it's been a little bit stiff. Um, the declination isn't too bad, but on the RA side, it's definitely got stiff. So I'm going to strip it down, and I'm going to check all of the attachments and um, have a look have a look at regreasing some parts. I'm not going to change any bearings. Um, that could be done at a later date. If you wanted to soup, sort of hyper tune this, you could uh, get updated bearings and do that. And obviously, you could follow this video uh, on the dismantling and uh, rather than just re grease bits, actually replace the bearings. So, we're going to take it apart. Um, just one point I changed the saddle. I've got an ADM saddle, it gives me uh, a much better mount, doesn't mark the uh, dovetail bars. This is the original, so. That would normally be on there, not with this black bit, that would be straight on. Um, so the first bit I'm going to take off, you won't have unless you've upgraded your saddle. But you'll just be removing the white bit that's there. So I'm going to keep all my deck parts over here together. And I'll keep all of my RA parts on the other side. Okay, so the declination clutch needs to come off. That just unscrews all the way. Now the small screws that hold the plastic cover on uh, only screw into plastic, uh, literally. So they're very easy to strip. Um, I think I have stripped one from uh, tinkering about before. So be careful with that. Um, it's very easy to do. Okay, and then we can um, undo the plastic cover. And then what we've got is quite a lot of uh, little connectors. So be very careful with the wires. Um, so we've got uh, a little plug there and a larger one here for the main cover. What I like to do at this stage is actually take a photograph of the layout of anything I'm sort of working on like this. I'm going to start off by stripping the declination out. So there's a little low ring there and there's a bearing here. There's a little roller bearing, so that'll be something we can clean and regrease. Okay. Now some of it's quite greasy already, so that's good. But we'll uh, we're definitely going to give everything a good clean. And then a regrease. I've actually got here. There's a small nut on here, which we can undo. And this is part of the spring-loaded part of the motor. Now, uh, Queeve the Lazy Geek did a video um, where he tightens this up to the point where the spring doesn't actually move it's the the worm is actually constantly pushed into the gear um, and uh, whether that's uh, the right way to go or not I am not a hundred percent sure um, I did have a look at it when I saw uh, Queeves uh, video um, I didn't see that it improved anything on the guiding so I'm not I'm not 100% sure whether I'd recommend that or whether to have it spring-loaded. I'm going to have a look at it 
and see what I feel uh, sits best with it because I did have a little play uh, with it and I'm sure it's the little adjustments I've done that have caused the um, tracking to go slightly out from what I was getting before. So there's a small spring here on, on this uh, screw so be very careful when you undo this small screw here because this spring will ping it off so get your finger on it and then you don't want anything flying out that's good and we can then hopefully work the motor out and then we've got a little plug there now be very careful when putting all of these plugs back in because the pins are extremely small and fine it's very easy to bend them so what I'm actually going to do here <coughs> so I don't get uh, confused where anything belongs I'm actually going to put because they're not going to be in the way I'm actually going to put some of the screws back in the holes that they belong in um, these are quite obvious um, so I'm not too worried about them they're two different sizes but I'm just you know don't want to get lost with it okay so it looks like this will lift off now and that's another little washer there I was a, I was wondering whether that was a that was a, that was the other part of the uh, roller bearing so that'll all be given a good clean and there's your uh, friction plate for the clutch so that we definitely want to avoid getting any grease on right okay just going to put that there Okay, let's just give this a clean because that's not supposed to be greasy. And I can see here that I've got, um, there's a sensor. Obviously reads these bits here and it's got a massive blob of grease on it. So um, I wouldn't have said that was very good. I'm just going to remove that uh, little sensor now and I'm going to see if we can clean that up gently and remove the grease that's sitting on top of it. And I'm just going to keep those screws separate but they look like they're the same so we just move them apart. Okay. There's also a wire just under there, and that wire, to me, could easily rub on this rotating part. So I may reroute that the other side, because that doesn't look like it's in the right place. So I'll definitely be rerouting that. There we go. So that's the sensor for the detonation. We'll put that over there as well. Okay. So this is the next bit we're going to get out. I mean, this doesn't feel too bad, but I bet you it could be better. So we've got some Allen bolts around the edge here before we can undo the, the main ring. I think from memory it's um, they're three mil in the size they're very small I know that is that too big well let's put it this way it don't fit so it must be oh 
That's the one I want. I'm not sure if it's three mil or two mil actually. Three mil. Yep, three mil. holding the spindle on the inside, this is undoing. And this will come off the top. And be very careful if you've got any of these little nylon shims, make sure you keep them. So this will be something else I'll clean and re-grease. Oh well, it came out. Not quite the way I would like to take it out, but it came out. Okay. It's quite a lot of grease sitting around all of this, so we'll just give it a little tidy up. So there's another nylon washer. Just give that a clean. And then we'll have a look at how everything is there. So that obviously sits on that side. So we'll have a look at that in a bit once we uh, come to put everything back together and what needs greasing. So that's everything stripped out um, and uh, I will give this a proper clean and degrease and then we'll look to re-grease everything to put it back together. Now there's a big chunk in that metal there. Luckily that nylon washer goes over the top. I'm not sure about the engineering quality. I wouldn't say it's the highest, but uh, as I say, it works fairly well, so can't complain too much. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at taking apart the RA. Um, again, we've got uh, a little connector to the motor down here, which we're going to just pop off. Okay, so I can see that there's another sensor here for the RA and that this is on a plate. So, <clears throat> wondering whether to remove the plate or remove the board off of the plate. Let's see if the, plate, the board will come with the plate. So we shall see. Okay. Good. The board actually is attached to the plate, so I wouldn't remove it off the plate unless you have to. These are very delicate little screws, so make sure your screwdriver is a good fit and be very gentle with them. Let this out there. Okay, so we want to remove this centre bit here, but I'm going to remove the motor first. So and if it's anything like the other one, the nut oh, this time the nut came off. On the other one it actually took the spindle out. Um, so I'll have a look at that in a moment and I'll see if I can free that nut from the spindle and so we can do them up independently. This washer is a bit fiddly.
I'm not going to fully take that out yet because we've still got the spring loaded part so I'm just going to undo that before I put my finger on the spring so that if when it's undone it doesn't suddenly ping and disappear that's good take this center pin out I'm quite happy I know where that one lives that one seems to have two washers on it this should lift out I'm looking there it looks like there's a groove there there's grease in it I hope the groove was oh yeah it, it is actually a specific groove to make space for that motor so that's good <clears throat> okay we'll clean that up in a minute right so we want to remove the RA part it looks like it comes out um, from the bottom the bottom plate so we need to undo this top bit so again that looks like this will be the same as before which is a three mil locking pin so just loosen that off and okay and then we want the other side so we're going to spin that And the RA is spinning quite nicely there, it wasn't before. I think the motor was actually engaged a bit with the worm drive and it was uh, stopping it from spinning. Oh, now that just lifted off. There is a thread there, but it doesn't look like the thread is available anymore. Hmm, we'll have to have a look at that. So we've got another... Another little... Uh, roller bearing here so these are the bearings if you wanted to you could replace um, I'm I wouldn't like to say what our higher quality these are I wouldn't have thought they were a particularly high standard but um, you know they do the job so um, but if you wanted to replace them I'm sure you could uh, source that size and get them replaced. I'm not really sure what size they are. This is a little bit awkward. It's got to come up square. Let me just put that on. That's the other side, isn't it? So let's just try and keep that married up. That's it. That's that one. So this has actually got um, a little screw here holding this down. And then it's got like a ring that goes over the top of that. So we just undo this screw. A bit unusual because the other one was screwed in differently to that and that should lift off as well there we go so we'll just put the electrics over there so they're out of the way let me look at it's another washer there that i've got and that that came out from the bottom there okay so i'm assuming now that this will come away Oh, and there's another big bearing there. Okay. Now this one just has the bearing in the centre. This one actually has a large roller bearing as part of it. So, okay. And there's your... bit of friction plate there which I'm not sure why you would ever that's got a lock with that to turn that so that's what that friction bit is for so that's got to be tight enough on there so that that doesn't slip okay right then so that's everything
strip down. This is the declination. Let's have a look in there. Right, I'm going to take this off as well. So this will just literally unscrew. I'm actually going to put that back in so I know how it lives. Right, and that basically is my AZ GTI stripped. So uh, have a little look at all the parts. Okay, I'm near the end of the uh, cleaning up process. I didn't bother to completely degrease everything. Now you can do that, and I know that some of the mounts that come from China can have a very thick, um, gloopy grease, very sticky grease in them. Now these don't seem to have that. So um, just by really wiping all the excess grease off with some um, paper towel, um, has got everything sort of like nice and clean looking there's no excess blobs anywhere and then I can re-grease and because there's still a very fine layer of grease on everything everything should be okay so if you do decide though to completely degrease everything just make sure you're very uh, careful to get everything completely re-greased because obviously what you don't want to do is have extra wear I did notice there was a fault with this so this spindle here, you have this uh, locking nut on the top for the RA and this actually was just being held on by the two Allen bolts either side and it looks like the thread itself is a little bit, well it's either not been uh, cut properly or it's been damaged at some point, maybe in assembly. So um, this was actually just slipping straight onto the spindle, not really tightening up. So. Um, I haven't got the ability to recut any threads or anything so what I've done is I've wrapped some plumbers PTFE tape around the uh, thread that's there and this now actually screws on um, and so it's just taken up whatever damage there was in that thread so a little a little repair there that I've had to do so hopefully that will help because I did notice that when the clutch was undone there was a bit of movement on the on, on the RA, so um, I'm hoping that that's going to get rid of that, which will uh, which will be good. Okay. So we need to start putting it back together. This bearing here, this roller bearing. needs to be greased and then drop that in there we'll just take the top bit off and the other side greased that's good just going to spend a moment just working that grease in with my finger Okay, this is the bit that goes in the bottom. So, this edge here goes on this friction edge here. So I'm gonna make sure that there's definitely no grease on that edge. Proof I haven't grown up yet, I still can't undo a child proof lid. Which is great because growing old is inevitable, growing up is an option, as I like to say. Okay, that's a nice clean edge now. With no grease deposits.
and that sits on there. Okay, so this now should go inside. Now let's have a feel, a little bit of movement there, so not in the centre. So we need that in the centre. Let's get that there. Okay. So this is the, this went right to the bottom and this actually locates everything that, that there will locate everything centrally. That's great, that's gone in, whoops, pull that out, let's just get that back into place and that sits in there. So that bearing goes to the bottom. We then have the RA locking pin and uh, clamp there. We'll just do them up a little bit. Okay. And this is what it basically locks up onto. And then this then goes in. And sits there and then we have the bearing on top so we're just going to do that going to grease this side of the bearing make sure the grease is worked in I'm just going to wipe the excessive blobs away because we don't want them to get in the way of anything else. We just slide that on top there. Take the top plate off. And we've just got to grease that top bearing. goes on top there okay we then do believe place this this goes on first doesn't it so this locks on underneath so what we need to do now is hopefully the small small repair I did to the um, packing the threads out a bit will will help and this will actually rather than just slip down will screw onto the top it's just slightly wonky there we go that's going on nicely and with this in place get these uh, Grub screws done up. Okay, so that's that gear back in, and then this just slips under there. We've just got these four screws to gently do up, so. Okay, so we're going to put the deck motor back in. So this slides underneath this here. Make sure you get that right, you don't want to be clamping it down on there. Um, so this is the main bolt and that swivels on that. We just get this located 
and we just won't do anything up just yet, we'll just see how it all sits and then we'll tighten things down and make adjustments so this can go on washer and nut this can go on I'm just doing it till the slack's gone and then we've got the screw here and there's a spring what we're going to try and do is catch the oops that didn't quite go to plan because it would be the easiest way I think of locating right so I'm through the spring what I've got to do now is just angle this up and it worked okay so we'll just pull that down so the spring is located on there if I try and pull this away it won't have it and that'll be because this is too tight I'm just going to loosen this till it allows this to move back and forth Gonna loosen this half a turn. Okay, so now I'm going to um, replace the cover, which also holds the circuit board. just very gently locate the um, screw holes Good. So this is the uh, control plug for the uh, RA motor, so I'm just going to very gently line that up and push that home. So just a point of note, uh, be very careful, um, this wire actually became detached from the um, circuit board. Uh, but luckily I've got a soldering iron and I'm not too bad with it so uh, I've managed to put that back um, but you don't really want to be getting into um, soldering stuff okay so um, this plug needs to go back in and that clicks in there this is for the other motor and that's the deck side right so that's the RA side put together it's nice and smooth. Do the clutch out. That's good. Now, one thing I wanted to look at was this, and I've got the motor pushed in. So what I'm going to have to do is run it and see whether or not there's any binding. If there is, I'll have to release that a little bit. So I won't be putting the main cover on just yet. Okay, so we're looking at putting the deck side back together now. So I took this apart first a while ago. So I've got to try and remember how to put it back together. So it looks like um, well, most of this here, I've put that back on there, that's the bit with the grip, and this is the one that has the C 
circle, right? So you've got the plastic uh, washer that sits over there. That's not bad, but I, I, I think I would be inclined to uh, grease this. This has got no bearing as such. So um, this. I'm definitely going to run a bit of grease over. Okay, so that's going to pass through the other side. Feels a bit better now. Okay. So from the other side, we have this washer, which goes in there, and then this clamp which holds everything together. I'm going to do this up. And again we don't want to be we don't want any movement. That's open. There's movement there. That's the movement. The whole thing moves, so we're just going to get that to the point where there's no movement. to just tighten this up. That feels a lot better. everything back in place there and we can now put the sensor back now what we had before was this wire was actually going underneath this and I I felt that the root of it would actually be better if it was not underneath it maybe the other side there So that would be screwed on there. Uh, and that would be there like that. And that should allow that to still turn. And I think the wire being the other side is a much better idea. I didn't like the wire going underneath that. I thought that was a potential for some rubbing, etc. So we shall put it the other side. Get these two screws located. Make sure everything turns and no noises, so nothing's rubbing or touching, which is great. I'm much happier with that wire running that side rather than this side and underneath that. Okay.
this is the deck and that plugs in that bottom one just push that wire out of the way that's all right that looks good okay so next job we need to put this little cover back two more diddly screws to uh, intricately place back in the holes One. it's supposed to be a magnetic screwdriver but its magneticness has has left me It's not doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, let's get that one there. Get that to locate. So that's that all back in. That's good. Okay, we've now got the gear here. Next job is we've got to get the motor back in. Now we've got to spring this side. This slides in like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the pivoting bit and we'll think about the spring and the other bolt not very easy let's get hold of that spring put it over that's good and then this one we left in place I'm just going to do that up in a good position so what I'm going to do here is just look at that that's good right. now the spring is quite strong and it does pull it back and it pulls that in Now what we have to decide is, do we want the spring to do its job, or do we want to just lock it in? I, I've got a feeling that locking it in is the best thing. So for me, that's now locked in. Right. Before I rebuild any other part of this... put this on here and we need to give this a little test run on the rig with the clutches done up and then the clutches undone and make sure nothing is binding so let's go and do that so I'm just having a feel with the clutches off and everything is if I just undo that everything is nice and smooth and exactly the same with the RA everything's nice so I'm going to do those clutches up I've just literally temporarily put on the old saddle just because I've just held it on with two screws because that one it's uh, 
you've got to bolt the top bit on as well so it's a bit more work okay so we're going to just connect this part back on so we have control over the mount and then we're going to slew it and see if everything's moving with no binding so we just plug this little fiddly one in first And when I say fiddly, I mean fiddly. And then this one is the holes at the top and the pins are at the top. And so they don't give you um, a lot of slack. But we just need to get this plugged in. There we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to undo this. Um, clutch here. I'm just going to roughly just make sure the wires are all running where they should be. Just going to put this on very rough and put the declination clutch back on. Everything feels nice and smooth. So, what we're hoping for now, and uh, so the clutch is locked deck is locked, that's on rough, so what we can do now is get some power to the unit, just turn it around, once you get power to the unit you get your flashing light, so that means we can connect to the Wi-Fi, so we're looking for SIN scan, <clears throat> there it is, and then we go to the Syntagam Pro app, and we're going to connect to this mount. Equatorial, and it's saying it's connected. Now, and see whether things are going to work. So there's the deck turning. I'm literally just going to turn that through 360 degrees to make sure there's no binding. So that's all good on the deck side. So now we're going to look at the RA. I think you'll all agree that didn't doesn't sound right at all. So something's quite amiss there. So we all shall take the cover off and see if we can see what's going on. Okay, let's get that away from everything. I think we can just can't quite get it out because of the plate there, but it's not connected anymore. So let's have a look. A screw here that's just basically saying I'm not coming out you can't get me and I can and I will okay 
Okay, so we replace this screw. Um, we just got to try and find out what exactly was going on there. Maybe the worm drive wasn't fully engaged, or maybe it was too tightly engaged. Is a possibility. So I'm just going back on with this. Make sure there's nothing touching. to push that up, take tension off the spring, okay, we're still okay, so, something to do with the tension we put on this, so we obviously put way too much tension on the nut, I can only assume, and that was causing a problem. And I think it was the worm drive we could actually hear. So let's just do that up, take the slack out of it, and there you go. So it's not happy there. So let's just undo that. just peculiar because that just doesn't like it does it that is just weird Okay, now we need to do a full revolution and make sure it's not binding. It seems okay now. Make sure that's in the camera. Let's just take that back a bit. Okay, that's excellent. There's no binding there on the full revolution, so that's really good. And the strange noise has gone. So I just think that was uh, part of the tension, uh, either too tight or too loose. Um, I'd say it was too tight because uh, it was when I loosened it, it uh, was okay. Put the depth patch back in, that holds it quite nicely in place actually. Now, uh, you want these bottom ones in first. Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to put the ADM saddle back on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this back onto my tripod and I'm going to put my scope on it 
and and then we'll give it a slew test okay so we make sure we're connected to the sin scan which we are and then we want the sin scan app already connected and we can Slew them out. Everything's moving quite smoothly. And all that's left is to test it at night and make sure that it's tracking. And with a bit of guiding, hopefully getting much better numbers. So this was the next time I was able to use the mount. And I was actually uh, imaging the Pinwheel Galaxy. I'd done a new calibration and got everything uh, running on the uh, mount and the tracking was much improved. Uh, I had a lot easier time balancing the rig because everything on the uh, declination and RA were a lot smoother. And the tracking now that I've done a new calibration is running really well. What I will do however is run a guide assistant uh, shortly um, and try and improve it even further. But I'm very happy with that. To be under one arc second is uh, brilliant. Uh, we're sitting at like well, almost oh, you know, it's 0 0.8. So I'm very happy with that. As I say, previous to doing the service uh, on this mount, I was getting uh, sort of well, I, it was sitting around 1.5 uh, up to 1.8, and sometimes even peaking out at uh, two arc seconds. Now at 360 millimeter focal length, that wasn't really causing me any major issues. The odd uh, sub would have uh, slight movement and misshapen stars. Um, and obviously you wanna get the best guiding you can. Um, this, this makes me feel much happier. The guiding's a lot more solid and it's bringing me back some uh, really nice images. So I'm very pleased I've done this. Um, I'm sure that you can go even further if you wanted to buy some upgraded bearings like some ceramic bearings or SDK ones um, I'm sure you could uh, improve things further if my mount starts to go down uh, in performance again or the um, either of the axes start stiffening up uh, what I will most probably do is replace the bearings next time as well as just taking it apart and uh, giving it a clean and a regrease so that it gets the uh, the full Monty. But at the moment I'm really happy with this. If you do have any questions about what I've done please let me know in the comment section below and I do hope that the video helps you in some way um, with any servicing or things that you want to do to your own mount. The AZ GTI is a brilliant little go-to mount and uh, with a little bit of... Uh, care it uh, it will uh, it will serve you well so i'd like to wish you all clear skies and until next time take care